Shall we open our Bible this morning to the book of Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. I also go to read Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 and Job 36 verse 5. Let's start from Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory. Will I not give to another? Neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. I'm going to also read from the book of Job, chapter 36, verse 5. Job, chapter 36, verse 5. Behold, God is mighty, but despises no one. He is mighty in his strength of understanding. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you, despise nobody. Mighty God of heaven, we thank you for your presence here already. You are not a respecter of distractor. You are the respecter of your own word. You are the respecter of your own integrity. You are the respecter of your own vision. You are the respecter of your own call. You are the respecter of your word that you exalt above your name. As your word is coming out this day, please let this word completely overshadow me, overwhelm me, and proceeding from the heart of mine to your children. And let everyone today who is standing under the sound of this little voice receive the enablement of god by the entrance of your word and the one online connected to this i pray after this word enablement of god will come upon you and you begin to do what you are unable to do ever in jesus name with all declare hallelujah mute your mic and respond to me amen hallelujah amen. 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 Hallelujah, amen. not amen. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 You hallelujah. respond, hallelujah. Come on, respond, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. All right. All right. Despise nobody. Now, we saw the attitude of God right from the beginning of the creation. The bringing forth of human being was from clay. Clay that has no breath. Clay that have no living within itself. God decided out of the clay, he molded the clay and he began to build the structure of humanity. He began to come up with the structure of humanity. We saw God eventually after he was done with the shape. We were told in the scripture, the Lord had a breath on human being. And then he make them a living being. We also see right from time the coming of Christ to this uh, present world was also uh, from nowhere. We were told that during his pregnancy, Jesus had no place where he will be delivered by Mary. He was taken to an officially speaker's uh, hospital. He was rejected there. There was no room for him until he was uh, able to locate the manger where in the midst of animals where it was eventually born so we see god in his attitude of using what is not recognized what is stupid what human think is foolish what is not well labeled he has been in that habit of using those things to glorify himself and today, just the same way as our God, the word of God is coming unto us today to despise nobody. Hallelujah. God has a way of changing what we think it is impossible to change and make a difference out of it. So today I want to open your mind up. I want to enlarge your heart by God's word to know how to respect and honor what God called his own creation. Hallelujah. And you know, if it, it takes God to come all the way from heaven to die for the entire human nature, then if it takes God to do all the process, then we have no right to despise anything. Hallelujah. Anyone despising nobody. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to have to help you out to relax your mind and stop getting worried about the way other people are crafted by God. All you need to do is to focus on your God and respect every individual because you do not know what tomorrow might tell. Hallelujah. Why then must we despise nobody? Talking about not to despise anyone, then the question is, what is the point? Why don't we need to despise anyone? Number one, God does not think the way a man thinks. Right? So our thinking is very limited. Okay? Our thinking is not able to know the totality in the picture. Our thinking is too slow and limited to understand the complexity and the process of the way God do, uh, God do things. So it is very important for us to know that we are very limited. And because we are very limited, there are some things we do not know now that may eventually come up in a in time in the future. There are some things that we are going to right now, we don't know the full explanation to them. Hallelujah. And in fact, the book of Isaiah made this so clear. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. Say, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. My ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Are my thoughts than your thoughts. So God does not think the way a man thinks. So God can decide to do things in the way he chooses. God does not need the patronizing of any individual in order to carry out his injunction. 
Hallelujah. He designed it fit for the whole world to receive salvation by sending his only begotten son. That is beyond what human can ever think about. Hallelujah. We also saw, as Paul well explained in the book of Romans, how he decided to extend salvation to the Eden, to the Gentiles, which include us. Because salvation originally is meant for the people of Israel. Okay, born the Jewish. But you know what? God decided to do what he pleases and extend the salvation to us today. Hallelujah. So the Jewish won't understand what God will do. That God has chosen not to be his begotten. Doesn't mean that we know all details about God. In fact, the, more, the closer you are to God, the more fearful you should be of him. Hallelujah. Uh, the more closer you are to God, the more you should be able to understand that God needs to be respected in his opinion. All right? God does not want to bring somebody closer so that he can disrespect him. So over-familiarity can cause problems for a child of God. So when God says, I'm going to do this, it's very important for you to keep quiet in the process of achieving what he says he will achieve. It's very important not to give God explanation. God was not forced to speak. When God spoke to you, learn how not to interpret by your human limitations. Because God must do things in his own way, in his own time, in his own, in his own design ways. God will not you know, be explained to what he ought to do. God will not need a counselor on how to make things happen. Hallelujah. So it's very important not to engage our limitation, human brain, human understanding to search him. Because there is no searching of his understanding. God does not think the way human being thinks. So when you see your partner, my decision may be today, might not be the decision you're going to be tomorrow. We have to learn, as closer we are to God, to learn on how to withdraw ourselves in giving everybody interpretations. Hallelujah. We have to learn on how to step back and allow God to do his perfect work on people. Let me tell you something. God does not. When Jesus was ministering on the service of the earth, he said, judge not. Those are part of the early messages. He said, judge not. That you will not be judged. So, the gospel itself is a despised gospel. And today, the gospel has become the salvation to the whole world. Jesus himself was despised. Today, Jesus has become the savior of the world. So God comes in a way that is beyond our human thinking. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourself before men. But God knows your heart. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Never in any way should we try to use Comoranderi's belief, the belief of teamwork, <laughs> the belief of colleagues to begin to paint God over. God does not act in the way multitude will think. God always acts in a unique way that multitude will not ever perceive. Learn how to be, if you are single, how to be an ugly person in your thinking. I think it's better to, 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 to have that done to you than for you to limit God. God cannot be limited. The whole world today can gather together and believe one concept. God can decide, this concept is not mine. And I'm not going with it. The, the way this uh, coronavirus has uh, come over the whole world, nobody ever thought of this. Nobody ever thought the, the dimension it has come. That's where God is. Even his closest prophet, the closest prophet, doesn't know the detail of matter. Hallelujah. God has a way of unilaterally, without informing any, anybody, without having a meeting with any human individual, okay, do, he, do his own thing in his own way. He doesn't need us to be able to perfect things. He doesn't need us to be able to, to, be able to accomplish things. God needs himself. Hallelujah. So, our human imitation must not be engaged to explain what God can do in any life. 
even including your life hallelujah number two why must we not despise anyone hallelujah because god disguises his wisdom in foolishness god disguises his wisdom in what in foolishness the book of first corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 first corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 but god has chosen the foolish things of this world to put shame to the wise all right and god has chosen the weak things of the world to put shame to the things which are mighty hallelujah that's what god does amen god all the time want to prove who he is amen god always make reference you guys you guys exist from non-living i can decide to make a system come out of non-living that's the way god think god doesn't think the way we are thinking so it disguises his wisdom most time in foolishness in stupidity that was the time a man of god was asked to dip uh, a mere wood a piece of wood in water to be able to command what an iron bar okay an axe that was lost into the water and we are told in scripture that the iron bar flow surface of the water why because god does not like to be explained <laughs> amen the way he does his things so it will be very very attractive to us for us to start explaining the way god does his things hallelujah so god disguises wisdom and stupidity even the gospel you know initially when the gospel came through jesus christ god christ was ministering all over the place the pharisee looking at the mosaic law they thought that they literally the promises and the written word uh, should be fulfilled uh, just as human will think in a human wisdom way but you know what god did not fulfill what was written about christ in a wisdom of man's way god decided to take the gospel in a very foolish way hallelujah and that's why we are told that the gospel is foolish to them they are not safe so it can be very dangerous for us to see god acting in our whole human wisdom god does not do things in accordance with human wisdom hallelujah number three why must we despise nobody why must we despise nobody because god himself does not despise anyone god is in the habit of qualifying who is unqualified bringing greatness out of smallness and bringing fame out of the unrecognized hallelujah We've seen that clearly in the life of David, the life of Joseph. We saw the situations that happened for the case of Joseph, where God decided to enter into the family and pick the, one of the youngest in the family. Hallelujah. We were thinking that at least the firstborn should be taken first, be considered, but God decided to go ahead and pick one of the youngest in the family, and God gave him vision. Uh, hallelujah and the brother thought in their, own, in their own way they thought that well they were going to stand on the way of god to bring those things to pass because god was involved in the whole process because god is not a respecter of human opinion when it comes to his own will all right he decided to make the whole thing happen even through the channel the brother thought we we're going to be endangering the fulfillment of the vision so god has a way of qualifying people that are not qualified hallelujah job chapter 36 verse 5 job chapter 36 verse 5 behold god is mighty but despises no one he is mighty in strength of understanding say we're going to stop whatever thinking we are thinking today whatever things we are going through today we have to know that god does not despise our neighbor he does not despise you he does not despise anybody because anybody can be somebody tomorrow when it comes to god even when you are preaching the gospel learn how to respect people to presenting the gospel to 
We are ministering to people who learn how to honor with courteous respect. Hallelujah. Even though the gospel is confrontational. We we'll learn how to minister the gospel with due respect and honor to the ones you're delivering the gospel to. Because God can do anything. Everybody say God can do anything. When somebody is saying that we look for the qualified people to be able to put people in position that has to do with the kingdom of God, then the person might be committing a erratic uh, behavior, committing a erratic attitude to thinking that way. What we have seen in the scripture so much firm in the scripture is that many people that are chosen to be great men of God, to be servant, called their servant of God, we are always coming from no place. Hallelujah. They come from a place where they were not recognized. They come from, you know, a low level, and God decided to equip them. Amen. That's why I'm seeing you today as you are standing here listening. The Lord has told me over and over again that all of you are going to be great people. And I keep sounding this in your ears. Your ears will hear what I'm saying right now today. I'm speaking to you prophetically because what I hear is what I speak. Whatever judgment you give to me is what I'm going to give out. Hallelujah. That all of you start considering yourself as great champions for the future. God wants to stretch forth his hand on you to use you so greatly to bring men unto himself. Doesn't mean that all of you become pastors and prophets. Doesn't mean that. It does mean that in whatever level God takes you to, is going to use you there to spread the gospel aggressively. Okay? God is going to use, use you there as a blessing for your generation. Today, I want you to start rethinking, not dispersing anybody, and including yourself. You have to stop despising people and despising yourself. The little beginning that God has been giving you today that you'll be engaged in, in your academics, do not engage in despising them. Hallelujah. Little coaching that the Holy Ghost is giving to you, that listening that you, are, that you are doing, that commitment to the little that you are giving, that faithfulness to the commitment God has given to you, very important to remain steadfast in that commitment hallelujah and never give up because god is going to use all these little beginnings to fix your future hallelujah so sometimes when say god give you a great vision great dream and say it's going to make you great what is going to follow that dream is going to be an embarrassment amen let me tell you something <laughs> hallelujah when god tells you it's going to make you great first of all the first event that's going to happen is going to first subdue you to become a nobody. Hallelujah. Before he can bring his promises to pass, he will get you through processes. We saw what happened to Joseph. You know, God gave him great dream and the embarrassment began in his life. Okay, it would have been better for, for him not to have a dream than to have that dream. The very day one he had a dream, that's where the trouble began. Hallelujah. The same thing happened to, to David. The day he was anointed, amen, God took his time. He said, I'll prepare somebody for myself, right? In the house of Jesse. He was telling uh, Samuel in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'll prepare Jesse for myself. He said, go ahead and fetch him. The guy was fetched from the feed and brought. And the anointing was poured upon him. Now listen carefully. In fact, Samuel thought that he's going to be the firstborn who is going to be anointed to be the king over Israel. This one have rejected him, all right? Okay, until the Lord, he tried all the brothers, until the last born, this David, was, was located. You know, was not even their midst. And it was brought in and was anointed by God. Now listen carefully. God has a way of doing things that you are not going to understand. He has a way of making his opinion come to play. As soon as the anointing came upon David... You saw what starts happening to David. Hallelujah. David started to have enemies. It is the enemy that he created by himself. It is the enemy that the anointing created for him. You know what I said? Prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemy. And my cups run over. So God has a way of taking the despised, the ridiculed in the family. And making them to be among kings and priests hallelujah that's what god does never in our life 
she would she would dare despising anybody god does not like that when god sees us despising somebody you know what he does he would decide by himself to elevate that person do yeah make no statement about nobody make no statement a conclusive statement about life it is not your choice it is not our choice it is not our decision to make a conclusive statement about any life learn to be quiet okay quiet in judging people negatively but be happy to lifting people up because god can do anything at any time in any process of his choice to anybody hallelujah despise nobody hallelujah first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 to 28 first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 to 28 and the best things of this world and the things which are despised god has chosen hmm. and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are wow verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence very important to understand that you are god's chosen when god has chosen you he can do anything to you the reason why many people don't feel their dream these days is because they think too much uh, about they realizing that dream amen i kind of kind of wonder people telling you that you can you can do it by yourself okay i'm telling you you can't do it by yourself see some people have worked so much in life and they never realize even one out of their multitude of dream they work so hard so what is the difference between that and somebody who work little and god decide to elevate him so you have to think deeply god is the one that brings things to pass what we should be preoccupied with is to diligently work hard be committed to god hallelujah so that at the end of your day god will bring his own intention to pass see give everything you have to the giver and withdraw yourself from making a conclusive statement about the gift hallelujah let the giver be in charge when god always sees you that you withdraw yourself from making a conclusive statement about about the gifts it will it will be allowed it will be excited to be able to bring those things that are said as his gift on you to pass hallelujah so learn on how to withdraw yourself or make a conclusive statement on anyone that is not you think is not up to you amen hallelujah first Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 first Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 he resists the poor from the dust and lift the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the heart are the lords and he has set the word upon them hallelujah that's what god does god can decide to change your situation today it doesn't matter you can say oh visa is my limitation oh this is my limitation let me tell you a story i came to the western world by god's grace with no permanent visa right came in the name of study and from there the way from Italy to Germany in the name of study and where we go to Germany we don't know where to go go back home and God said no it's not stopping there and then God also moved us in the name of work and study to the United States of America and what we got here we were inspired to apply for the lottery and we would never think that anything can come we just want to try as other people are trying and we go we have it we were taking as permanent resident we won the lottery and god's whispered to me said i told you before i have decided to do this and i do it in my own way yeah, because each time then i will just be thinking around i'll be thinking i don't know how what to do because i think after i finish my uh, graduate program in the united states what's next i don't know what next I just like the whole future is like i don't know what i have to go back and this and that but god said look i spoke to you quietly now i want to remind you what i've done to, for you today do you not believe that i have a purpose and plan for you and i shouted in my voice lord i believe hallelujah yeah. Three, let me tell you something 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter the limitation. God has a way of resolving issues with you. Amen. What is very important is that you keep your commitment to God. You keep your devotion to God. Very important to keep that. Refuse completely to despise anybody. Hallelujah. Including yourself. Because God can do anything. Amen. Because I see CEOs here right now. I see CEOs here. Some people are thinking, well, how, can, how could that be? Because the environment won't permit that. What, who's the owner of the environment? We are told here, the foundation of the whole world is God's. It's in God's hands. He holds it. Hallelujah. So he can decide to inform those who are on top that it's your turn to mount the top. Hallelujah. People God often use, they always come from nowhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So stop despising yourself today and stop despising people around you. Amen. Make as many friends as you can today. Connect with people. Hallelujah. Connect with people. Get excited with at everything. Every disappointment sometimes could be a pathway for God to lift up your head. I'm speaking to you today with prophecy because something is about to happen to your future. I see great things about to happen to this ministry. God is inspiring me this morning to say this with emphasis that despise nothing, despise nothing, be despised nothing because I am God. I do what I please. I'm pleased with what I do. What I do pleases me. I am the Lord God Almighty. That's what I hear to my ears right now. God says, You need to stand still and watch the glory of God because very soon, great announcement. It's about to descend upon your destiny. Amen. The list is about to come upon you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 113, verse 7. Psalm 113, verse 7. He raises the poor from the dust and lift the needy out of their harsh heap. That's what God does. Psalm 16, verse 6. Psalm 16, verse 6. God set the solitary in families. The lonely person in the family. I always mention her name, Katrin Kuma. Uh, they, th they thought it's not going to become any anybody. Amen. But when God undo that woman, he became an impactor of power. Hallelujah. We know about Den Benihim, how it was imparted through the ministry of Kat Katrin Kuma. Hallelujah. He was able to receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost via that ministry. Hallelujah. See, God can do anything. Okay, God can take a lonely person, somebody who is ignored, somebody who people thought is worthless, and he can just decide to change his destiny. Stop. We need to stop limiting people. Amen. It is not a decoration of a super, super, you know, super organization that does things. I found out that God Almighty, when his mind is made up, there's nothing you can do to stop him. Amen. You can tell him, say, it's enough. That's when God will start doing things for you. Amen. In only those days where Christ said, God, I want this to be done. I want this to be done. I want this to happen. God might decide to be quiet. Hallelujah. Because it might be taking you through some moment that he has to train you to understand that total dependency on him is vital than the process of your thinking, than your ideas and opinion. And when he takes you through that process and is able to paralyze your pride, then it comes suddenly. Hallelujah. And he begin to pump goodness into your life. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. When he begin to do that, he begin to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. He's not going to even prepare it where it's convenient. He's going to take you, raise you up, and put you where people will be against you, and yet you still shine. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You need to stop our limiting ourselves we need to stop that thing that tells us it is impossible but with god all things are possible stop limiting yourself stop despising anyone hallelujah it breaks out those who are bound into prosperity can you imagine that somebody was bound an example is joseph who was in prison bound hallelujah couldn't come out and all hope was lost on joseph Hallelujah. <laughs> All hope was lost. Even Joseph was even trying to tell the other man that was released. He said, Remind, remember me before the king. 
and the God actually prolonged prolong the whole process. Eventually, it was called upon. Amen. In the palace. God took the bound man from the prison. They prosper him. Hallelujah. God can prosper you today. Hallelujah. God can prosper you today. Hallelujah. God can prosper you today. You have to stop despising anyone, including yourself. Hallelujah. Number four. Why must we not despise anyone? The worship of God may be under the disguise of foolishness. Amen. No many people have despised people dancing before God and praising God and celebrating God and and sometimes God decide to God can decide to bring His praise out of the out of the mouth of babes and suckling. Hallelujah! And say, oh, what is this, what is all this nonsense? <laughs> what are these guys doing? <laughs> you come to a fellowship, you despise all that you they do there. You <laughs> you say they are too few. <laughs> it's no, it's a place of uh, a worthless kind of gathering. <laughs> it's not like. Uh, <laughs> A cathedral. <laughs> you just despise everything they do there. I will say, little flock, fear ye not. It is the will of the Father to give you the kingdom. God always know how to celebrate the little and make it great. I mean, there's a problem here about Micah. Look at what he did. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 16, verse 20 and 21. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Micah saw his daughter look through a window and saw king david leaping <laughs> like he, sorry to say that like a crazy man <laughs> and dancing before the lord <laughs> and she despised him in his heart <laughs> verse 20 then david returned to bless his household and micah the daughter of saul came out to meet david and said how glorious was the king of Israel today uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovering uncovers himself 21 look at what David said so David said to Micah it was before the Lord who was me instead of your father and all his household to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Look at what David did here, right? He humbled himself and he introduced the encounter to God. <laughs> he make Micah to face God. See, sometimes when you try to despise God, who God does not despise, and if the one that he despised make turn you to, to face God, that might be a trouble for you. Hallelujah. If we despise the poor because they are poor, the poor can cry upon the Lord, the book of Proverbs, and God can hear his voice and turn against you. Very important. That's what happened here. <laughs> you know, David knew what he ought to do. He knew that it's a, it's a nobody of what, that what nothing. But he knew what he ought to do. I refer Michael back to God who called him, who anointed him, and see what happens. Appointed me to be over ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I play music before the Lord. Okay, and I will be even more undignified <laughs> than this, and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maiden servant of whom you have spoken, by them I will be heard in honor. Verse twenty-three. Therefore, Michael. The daughter of Saul had no children to the day of her death. Look at the word, therefore, because of what he did. See, sometimes when you fight people that God has raised up to be their praise, you are actually fighting God. We should desist from despising the person that looks like nothing can come. Okay? There's some people that like the way they speak, the way they do things, it, it appears as if no good things, right, can come from Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. And it happened to Jesus Christ. Nobody thought any good thing can happen, can ever come where it came from. But God decided to bring good things out of there. So God can decide to put his praise and worship under the ridicule. And then you go out there and then ridicule the garden. Say this garden is too small. They are worthless people. And then in the future, you find yourself walking under the members of those church, church people. Hallelujah. God raised them up as kings 
and then you are not serving them. They are paying your salary. Hallelujah. See, my friend, wherever God puts you, stay there. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be agitated. God is interested in what he has determined to do. It is not about your interest. It's about his interest. Right? God wants your faithfulness and commitment to him. God wants us to be committed to not despising people. Hallelujah. Including ourselves. Psalm 82 verse 5. Psalm 82 verse 5. God is the defender of the weak. Why must we not despise anyone? God defends the weak. Okay. Psalm 82 verse 5. Defend, we are commanded by the word of God, say, defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. Hallelujah. If you go around and begin to destroy people, uh, people are afraid and studied and got certificates. And all we do to them is not to give them job. They are qualified. You pretend and try to say they are not qualified. You relegate them. You what are supposed to be their portion. You give to somebody who has a low, <laughs> low level of qualification. You give it to them because you think these people are nobody. Why should they be included in this corporate organization? You know what? When a community is engaged in that, God is passionately very angry. He will be ready to fight such community. Hallelujah. Very important. If you want God to prosper your community, prosper your life, learn how to give honor. To whom honor is due and learn how to give respect to whom respect is due learn how to render justice and fairness let's rise up on our feet this morning hallelujah this was nobody god does not like anyone to be oppressed the gospel actually is to deliver the oppressed from the oppression god is a eater of oppression hallelujah you go to cry unto god today i have accepted in my heart not to despise myself everywhere i've despised myself today i call upon you for a healing i revamp my your glory i revamp your promises i revamp your dream upon my life to come to fruition in the name of jesus christ whatever i have despised myself including my dream including anyone around me who can be helpers of destiny today i come call you for redemption let there be redemption in those areas i put an end to despising people i have come to you to obey and humble myself before you i have come to you to be committed to your call i have come to you to be committed to humility to subject myself under your leadership today thank you father in jesus name we are prayed one more prayer you are going to tell god what the people have put down in my life today let them resurrect Amen. what have been despised Amen. that is worthless in my life today let there be resurrection upon them everything that has been pulled down that i thought is not going to rise again let them receive bread of god rise 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 my dream rise to fulfillment your purpose rise to fulfillment speak to god everything that is delegated by the mockers I call the power of the resurrection of Jesus to make them alive again. Let your purpose be fulfilled. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we've all declared. Father, in heaven, we thank you today for the entrance of your word and give light and understanding to the simple. You've asked me to speak this word today simply to remind your people of the need not to despise the seed you planted in them not to despise one another and not to despise the environment we've seen your action in using even the enemies of men to favor men mighty god of heaven will come under the humility today subjecting to what you have said we pray everything that we have despised We'll call for your redemption again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
all the life that we have lived that made us look down upon others we pray for forgiveness we pray for rebamping of everything that we have mocked today in the name of jesus christ all the dream that you've given to us that we have not taken attention to, re to to celebrate to honor you for today i pray that you have mercy and bring those dreams to pass thank you father blessed be your holy name in jesus name we've all declare <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my